We're Danny and Kate, and this is Paco. We recently bought 12 acres of land in the Spanish mountains. Follow the journey as two DIY novices with tons of enthusiasm, but not quite as much know-how. Renovate a small stone barn into the tiny house of our dreams and bring the land back into full production. But first, before we rip the roof off our brand new home, we need somewhere to stay. Welcome to the Cabin Build series. Hi everybody, welcome back to the third episode of the Cabin Build series at Smithsdale Farm. What have we been doing this weekend? So this weekend we've been finishing off the base of the cabin. So we've laid the, the bottom layer of ply, ply board, putting in the insulation and topped off with uh, some OSB. If you've been enjoying our Cabin Build series so far and you're not yet subscribed to the channel, then please do consider doing so. Thank you to everybody who is following along so far, giving us loads of encouragement and really kind of geeing us on to get this project done. We hope you really enjoy the video. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't. And let's get on with the video. This morning we're going to start with a trip to the shops. We've got a list of all the things that we need to buy to do the next section of the cabin. And there's a new hardware store that we want to go to as well. Uh, that looks like it's got more machinery and maybe some trailers and things like that. So we want to go and have a look there as well. So a kind of morning of jobs really, uh, buying materials, getting things done so that we're prepared to work on things for the next few days. that there were so many different types of strimmers. So we're back on the land. Well, I'm back on the land. We weren't able to fit everything into the car that we needed to on this trip just now. So Danny's actually on the way back down the mountain to go and pick up the final things, which are the insulation. So for now, whilst he does that, I'm gonna get on with putting some rocks in the kind of foundation base layer underneath the frame. Um, thank you to Hazel, one of our subscribers. Um, they mentioned to us in the comments that um, there's a potential problem with rodents if we don't kind of create a base layer underneath but also there could be an issue with runaway from the rain we had thought about that um it doesn't rain all that much where we are but when it does it rains quite heavily and so sometimes what can happen is you get these uh, kind of tracks through the soil um, and it can wash away parts of the land so what we're going to do is create that kind of layer underneath mitigate anything that might happen from rainfall and also deter any rodents from making a home underneath ours and i'm gonna have this little cutie for company Ready? Catch! Good boy! Go! So I've managed to get a little bit done around each of the footings so far. All of those are now kind of filled in and now <laughs> the task is all of this area here. Uh, to do each one of these took about three buckets so we might be here for a while. Danny just got back from picking up all of the rock wool. So I think it's a beer and work operation.
it's much harder than it looks and it takes a lot longer than you think. Even with beers to help, dance music in the background, it's, it's a big task. So we're gonna come back to it tomorrow because we're losing light. So that's where we're gonna leave for the night. I think we'll see you in the morning. We're really excited to see that the figs have been doing really well whilst we've been away. Um, we have been watering them a little bit with our kind of kitchen waste water after we've been doing washing up and things like that. So they have had a bit, um, but they've mainly just been living off the rainfall that we've had here. We haven't done anything special to them and they seem to be thriving in this spot here. We're thinking about doing some air layering with them later in the year so that we can have more fig trees than just this one. Uh, we'll come to that in another video in the future. But the fig tree is doing really, really well. So just look at the amount of figs that are on here. We're going to pick a few and take them over to our neighbours, say hi, and share some of the produce from our land. How are they, Danny? Really good. Very sweet. They're actually the the kind of big ones that you see. Uh, there's a lot of organic shops here that have these and they cost a fortune when you buy them in the shops. So to be able to just pick them and eat them like this is amazing. This is a dream. I love figs. Mm. You start with the wrong end. Mm. So we do also have this other fig tree here on the property. It's just a small one. It's not fruiting yet. It might come next year or the year after. Um, I mentioned briefly about wanting to do air layering. Uh, and basically this is a process where you create a tree which will fruit earlier. So rather than creating a kind of baby tree like this right from the beginning, where you grow it from the small roots and uh, it keeps growing from there, what you do is you take an existing tree and create a kind of root ball or a big kind of root stock around one of the existing branches. You then cut that piece and turn it into a tree which will already be fruiting which is kind of a clone of the original tree. Um, if you're interested in that kind of process it can be done with all different types of trees. Um, I know that lots of citrus trees are done in that way for example and fruiting trees like this. Um, there are some really good videos that you can watch by uh, Prosperous in Spain. If you want to check out his Instagram and his YouTube channel, uh, his property the Stargazer is really beautiful. It's down towards the south of Spain, um, I think near Malaga. He has a really beautiful property in the mountains where he's been uh, renovating a small house and um, regenerating the land so i'll put the links down below so that you can go and check him out he's got some really interesting videos about the air layering process and he's been doing it for his figs and a lemon tree i believe um really cool go check it out for us it's a process that we're probably going to start in the autumn once these well, not this one, but once the other tree uh, finishes fruiting, um, that's the time where you can do it. You can either do it in autumn or in spring. In spring is best, but we might try some in autumn and see how it goes and then do more in the spring.
Yeah, spying stones would be easier. As you can see, this ground is just full of it. Like broken into gravel just with time. And uh, it seems a shame to buy your materials that we have so readily available. But yes, it's very manual labour. Okay, so the understone layer has now been done. The next step is to put runners along the inside of these beams and then place ply board on top and then the insulation and then top it off with some OSB. In true Danny and Kate fashion, we plan one thing and then have to do something else. So um, it's just started um, to thunder and lightning and there's gonna be a storm coming right now, apparently, uh, which wasn't forecast when we looked yesterday. And it was forecast this morning, but it was like a 30% chance. So we've topped the OSB here, the other stuff's topped on the other side. It's starting to rain a bit more heavily now, so we're gonna dive inside for a little bit. It looks like it's not gonna be around for too long, hopefully. So maybe we'll have enough light to be able to get back to it a little bit more today. Okay, so that was relatively uneventful. Half an hour of rain, tiny bit of thunder and lightning, and it all seems to have cleared up. So we're gonna get back to it. So we're adding these battens either side so that the plywood has something to sit on. They go all the way down the edge and then we'll fill this gap here, it's a 15 centimeter gap, with another little piece. And then basically the ply goes on top of here, then the insulation and then OSB on top. So we pilot hold the, the runners with a, a size three, three bit. Um, and then the screws are a four. Um, so we're just preloading those into each one and then um, we can hold it in place and the other one drills it should go quite quickly. We've also staggered the runners um, in each like section um, so that the screws don't go into each other from, from either side. It just started raining again and I don't know if you can hear the thunder and lightning in the background but it's on its way back. So we've decided to stop there for the evening it's about eight o'clock, so it's a decent time of night to stop. Um, we can make food and enjoy the rest of the evening um, and then come back to it tomorrow. So everything is topped up over there in case it rains, keep it all protected and out of the rain. And yeah, back to it in the morning. Good morning, it's Sunday morning and we're just on a little walk down at the bottom of the valley. Just a little exploratory walk this morning before we get back to work and try to finish off the cabin before we head back to Barcelona. The only problem with walking down to the bottom of the valley is that you've got to come back up.
So we're almost all boarded out now. Danny's just doing the last bit of tacking on this one here. And then we've got to finish the little pieces that are 35 centimeters to close the gap on that side. It's 31 degrees today, so pretty warm. Yes, mum, we have got sun cream on. So yeah, it's, it's hot work, but we need to leave to go back to Barcelona in a few hours. So we'd like to get as much done as we can so that we can leave it in a good state, all tarped up and safe so that it's okay for when we come back next time. So it's a bit of a race against time. As always, it seems to be with us. Um, but let's see how far we get. We knocked over the tax. Last of the tacks going in. So we've got the runners on, ply board tacked down. What we need to do now is, is drop the insulation in and then cover it with the OSB. Now, even though we're doing this outside in a ventilated space, rock wall insulation is not the best thing for your lungs and your skin and your eyes. So we've got gloves, masks and goggles just for extra protection. Let's go. So now we're just cutting some little sliver pieces to fit down in the gap so that it's all nice and packed in. Now when we lay the OSB we're actually going to do it in that direction so that it goes across the beams and we spread the weight but since we don't have time to finish that part of the project before we head back to Barcelona we're just going to lay the OSB on top like this for now so that everything's secure and then put all of the tarpaulings on and then off we go. The cabin base is all tucked up, nice and safe. So I think that's where we're going to leave it for this week. Sorry that. See you on the next one.